Where'd my marker go? Oh, there it is. Okay, so back to this uh, example with this little rocket guy. Um, so now let me do a different example uh, with it. And so now, and I'll pick up from where I left off. Let's say that the uh, we have a velocity of four meters per second this way. It's moving already. Okay. And now I'm going to fire this rocket right here so it pushes down. So I have a thrust downward. Um, and let's say for just one second, just to be different. So let's find out, can we find out where it is and how fast it's going? Okay. So we'll just use the same thing. F net, change in momentum over change in time. Okay. So but now, what's my initial velocity, what's my initial momentum? V1 is going to be 4 meters per second, x hat, and F net is just going to be FT, and it's going to be negative, I said it was 2 newtons, 2 newtons y hat. Okay, so now they're in different directions. You can imagine what's going to happen. It's going to start uh, curving down this way. It's, I'm going to assume it doesn't tilt, so it stays in the same orientation. <clears throat> okay, let's just do the exact same thing. Let's write down FT is um, MV2 minus MV1 over delta T. So I want to find, I know V1, I want to find V2. So I, now V1 is not zero, so I get FT delta T, that's the thrust, equals MV2 minus MV1. I can add that to both sides and I get MV2 equals MV1 plus FT delta T. Okay, and then I could divide both sides by the mass. There. So now I have an expression for the final velocity, and it is a vector. Okay. Okay, now, now it's not a one-dimensional problem, so we'll do it. I'll do the x, and then I'll do the y. So let's say v2x equals v1x, which is 4 meters per second, plus ftx delta t over m. Let me just write that ftx delta t over m. But what's my x component of the thrust? Zero. So this whole term is zero. So v2x is 4 meters per second. Let me put that up here because we'll need it. Okay, so here's the important thing. The, ro the space robot was moving this way. The thrust, the force was this way. So since the force was only in the y direction, it didn't change the x direction motion at all. The force is only in the y direction, so the motion only changed in the y direction. So at the end over here, even though it's moving down, it still has the same 4 meter per second in the x direction. Okay, <clears throat> so now I still have this up here, I still have that, let's just do the y direction. I'm going to erase that. So now I have uh, the same thing in the y direction, v2y is going to be v1y, which is, there's an x component with no, no y components, so zero. And then I have f2, ft in the y direction is negative two. So I have negative two newtons times, oh, I said one second, one second over the mass of one kilogram, and this is going to give me negative two meters per second. So putting that together with my x velocity, I have the final velocity v2 is going to be four meters per second x hat minus two meters per second y hat. So that's how fast it's going <clears throat> after the one second thrust down. If I want to, I could find the direction for that. Um, I'm not going to, but if I know it's going four meters per second that way and uh, two meters per second down that way, 
I can find that angle tangent of theta is going to be um, opposite, over opposite over adjacent, so it's going to be Vy over Vx, and then you could do that. Okay. Now, what, what about where is it? Um, the last time, we'll just pick up where we left off, and the last time it had a position, I'll call this um, R1, because the origin, it's not at the origin anymore. R1, it, we said it was at 4 meters. So it's going to be 4 meters x hat. That was the uh, vector locating where it is. Okay, because the origin's over here. So it's over there, it's 4 meters over. So what's R2 after the 1 second? <coughs> well, I can do the same thing I did before. I can use the definition of average velocity. So I can say V average, I'm going to write it as a vector now, is delta R over delta T. Where R is just a gen it's not X, it's not Y, it's both X and Y. So this is going to be R2 minus R1 over delta T. So multiply both sides by delta T, I get V average delta T equals R2 minus R1. So R2 equals R1 plus V average delta T. So, and now what's the average velocity? Okay, so over here let me write V average is going to be uh, V1 plus V2 over 2. This is an average because it has a constant changing velocity. You can do that. So this is going to be, um, my initial velocity was 4 uh, x hat, and that was it. And my final is 4 x hat minus 2 <coughs> y hat. So I'm going to get, let me just write this out as 4, I'm going to leave off the units for, for, for now, 4 x hat plus 4 x hat minus 2 y hat over 2. So I can combine these two, right, because, okay, I'll answer that later. I can combine those two because they have the same direction. Oh, mute, that's what I'll do. Okay, and they're in the same direction, so this gives me, and divide by two, I get uh, four x hat plus, or net minus, the phone threw me off, minus one y hat. So that's my average velocity. So now I can write this as x and y directions. x2 equals x1, v average x delta t. So x1 is four, average x velocity is four, and that's one second. So this is gonna be four plus four times one equals eight meters. And then I can do the same thing, y2 equals y1, which was zero, minus the average velocity of one meter per second times one second is gonna give me negative one meter. So the final position, r2, is gonna be eight meters x hat minus one meter y hat. So now I know how fast it's going and I know where it is after that thrust. A little more complicated situation because it, it's two-dimensional.